everyone, welcome back to another session for our agriculture and rural development. Uh, for today's topic, we are going to continue with our previous lecture where we have discussed something about the factors relating uh, factors which affect the crop production. All right, so today we are going to continue with our factors. The first factor out here is on adaptive factors. All right, so whenever we're talking about adaptive factors, so adaptive factors relate to soil. All right. So anything that relates with soil, the factors, it can be uh, soil moisture, we have soil air, soil temperature, soil mineral, soil organic matter, soil organisms, and some of the soil reactions. So these are some of the sub factors which affect the uh, crop growth as well as the uh, development and thereby affect or hamper the production. All right, now let's look into each of these uh, sub factors in detail all right the first one out here is uh, in soil moisture so when we're talking about soil moisture it's nothing but the water which is present in the soil all right and the uh, water is actually the main constituent which is necessary for the gro growth of the plant right water number one point that you guys need to remember water is the main constituent Necessary for the growth of plants or any chemical or physical or biological processes that needs to occur can be only done through the presence of water. Another one out here is that water is essential for photosynthesis, right? For photosynthesis. So without water, the process of photosynthesis will not be uh, possible. Uh, another point that I want to point out out here is that the nutrient availability as well as the mobility of these nutrients in the soil is also, uh, is also or can happen uh, due to the presence of the soil moisture only. So with the presence of this soil moisture, uh, the nutrient availability and mobility also increases. If there's a higher soil moisture, then the nutrient availability and mobility of these nutrients in the soil and even to the transfer of this transport of these nutrients to the plants also increases. Another uh, point out here that I want to uh, stretch is the influence on the soil environment. Okay, so the uh, Suppose if the soil environment in the soil environment if the soil is dry then the presence of moisture can completely change it right suppose uh, for example if you are in a desert all right so in the desert there is a drought no water no nothing and due to that whole nutrient availability as well as the moisture uh, the water holding capacity of that soil in the desert is completely bad right so but the presence of this water or the soil moisture can drastically change the whole environment of that soil and thereby uh, have an effect on the crop production, a positive effect on the crop production. Uh, another point out here is that the soil, they help in chemical as well as the biological uh, activities, right? So some of the activity that I want to point out out here is that it helps in this uh, thing called mineralization where this is basically this the decomposition or uh, the process of chemical uh, chemical decomposition of these chemical compounds which are not available to the plants in the soil and they make it available uh, in form of organic matter which can be absorbed by these plants Okay, so this is the whole process of mineralization where the absorption of, uh, with the decomposition of these uh, chemical compounds and this uh, unsoluble chemical compounds actually, or the nutrients uh, will be made available, will be broken down and will be made available for the plants to absorb. Okay, so these are something on the soil moisture. Now coming to the soil air, uh, when we're talking about soil air, we're going to focus on soil aeration, okay? All right, uh, so when we're talking about soil aeration, uh, the first thing out here, it's written uh, that soil aeration helps in the absorption of water by the roots. All right, um, so this aeration, sorry, aeration 
And the soil air, when we mean the soil air is there in the soil, it means that there is an oxygen in the soil. So whenever there's oxygen, whenever there's water, then the life begins, right? So in that way, there are a couple of microorganisms and other uh, plant roots and other chemical processes and biological processes which cannot occur without the presence of the uh, air or oxygen, right? And also this germination out here, the germination is also inhibited if the oxygen is not there, right? Germination is inhibited without oxygen. If oxygen is there, then the germination can be started. Uh, another point out here is that it is essential for the respiration of roots as well as for the microorganisms. Um, so the soil air, basically the oxygen, is necessary for the respiration, right? And also for the microorganisms which is present in the soil. Uh, another point is that uh, it helps in the decomposition, sorry, uh, it's essential for the nutrient availability. Uh, so the nutrient availability can be, effect, can be changed uh, with the presence of soil air, right? So because it helps in breaking down this uh, inorganic matter or these nutrients which are not uh, completely available, which is the insoluble minerals or the nutrients. So insoluble minerals or the nutrients, they are broken down by the help of oxygen or decomposed, right? And we get this soluble nutrients which are or which can be taken up by the plants all right okay all right uh, so this is how this whole process helps uh, another point that i want to stress here is that it also helps in decomposition of organic matter without the pro without the uh, with the absence of oxygen decomposition cannot occur uh, it needs uh, it needs the sorry it needs oxygen to go forward with any breakdown or decomposition of any of these organic matter uh, another last point that i want to um, stretch out here is that how this soil air or uh, can be affected by any other crops for example um, another rice i would give an example of rice all right so rice is a crop which needs less oxygen right because it is because it needs us uh, because it's usually submerged if you have noticed that rice whenever we go to the rice field we always see that there's a submerged of uh, these rice plants are submerged in water and when there are higher level there is a higher level of water then the oxygen level drops right so that is how the rice they need a lower uh, oxygen but on the other hand like legumes or potatoes or tobaccos uh, other such crops they need higher amounts of oxygen for its normal growth and development okay so i hope this is clear now let's go to another uh, slide where we're going to talk about the uh, soil temperature so when we're talking about soil temperature uh, soil temperature is nothing but the heat present in the soil right guys um, so basically soil temperature it affects the physical biological and chemical processes which happen or which goes on in the soil all right uh, another point is that it also helps or accelerates the rate of trans uh, the absorption of the water or the nutrients by these plants from the soil okay number first one is that the rate of absorption processes right it can be water or it can be nutrients okay guys um, another one all right so this is also the first uh, uh the role or the factor how it affects uh, the second one is that it does without the uh abs with the absence of soil temperature or the heat in the soil germination as well as the growth rate of the plants 
it reduces, all right? So with high, if there is a soil temperature, if there is higher heat, or if there is enough heat, then germination can occur, and it will also increase the rate of growth. But with the absence of this soil heat or with soil temperature, then definitely it's going to reduce the growth rate as well as uh, it's also going to reduce the germination rates of the uh, plant. All right, so the second one is germination rate. Okay, uh, now coming to the third point, Right, so the third point is that uh, it also helps in the microbial activity and these, the, when there is a higher amount of microbial activity in the soil, then there will have a high number of these uh, decomposition also taking place and the nutrient availability of these uh, nutrients from the soil to the plant will also increase, all right? So it accelerates the microbial activity, okay? All right, uh, another one uh, out here is that the soil temperature can also, uh, basically we say that the cold soils, they are actually not conducive for the normal growth of most of the agriculture crops. So you can make out that the high, if there is a higher soil temperature, if the soil is warm, then there'll be a better uh, crop growth or the growth rate will also increase. So this is the case for most of the uh, agriculture crops where the if, the if it's cold soil, then it's not going to have a better crop growth rate, all right? So it affects the, the cold soils. Cold soils, they are not conducive. for agriculture crops. So remember this point, guys. Uh, it's always the warm soil, which is always good for, okay? Uh, I hope this is clear. Um, coming to another, another slide where we are gonna... So this is on the soil mineral matter. Uh, we all know about the soil mineral matter, right guys? So soil mineral matter is nothing but the minerals or the nutrients which are available or which are present in the soil. Um, and a lot of, we can say that the soil, the basic nutrients, where, which is necessary for the normal growth and development of the crop, these are NPKs. So these are also known as macro, macronutrients, right? So uh, we have macronutrients like which are necessary for the, uh, we can say that these are NPK, these can be known as the, the macronutrients. So these are the major nutrients which are present in the soil, right? And as at least around 45% of the soil composition is filled with minerals, like 45%, and the rest is 25% is air, 25% is water, and we have around 5% of organic matter, right? So this contains, or this consists of the largest, uh, largest uh, constituent, which is about 45% is mineral. And all these minerals, these are broken down from the rocks, or it can be through igneous, sedimentary, or other type of rocks, which, gonna, which we are gonna talk about in our, uh, as we go forward with the lectures, all right? Um, for now, so these are broken down and with years and years of uh, breaking down of these uh, primary rocks, um, the, we get all these macronutrients, we get other sources of nutrients, uh, macronutrients as well, like calcium, magnesium, uh, manganese, sulfur, iron, potassium, all of these we get from the soil itself. And these nutrients are actually essential for the growth and development of the plant. Right, without these nutrients, uh, the crop cannot survive, any plant cannot survive, as these are, simple term, these are the food for these uh, plants, all right? So these nutrients are actually the food. The same way, like even us 
as humans or any living organism, you need nutrients to properly survive or to properly function. So same way these plants also, they need these uh, nutrients which is necessary, otherwise they're going to go for, they're going to have some physiological disorders or nutrient deficiencies going to happen and thereby it's going to hamper the normal crop production. Okay, uh, coming to another another factor which affect the soil uh, the crop growth is the soil organic uh, matter right so when we're talking about soil organic matter soil organic matter is nothing but any material which is originally from the living organisms all right it can be either plants or it can be either animals and that is returned to the soil and goes through decomposition so basically any debris that you have so suppose this is a plant or suppose this plant died and it fell off on the ground, right? So say it's a waste, okay? So this plant died, dies off and then it goes into the plant. Uh, we also have like the animal, some, suppose a carcass of animal is here and it dies off. And once it goes here, the whole decomposition process occurs. And thereby, after this decomposition, we get this thing called the organic matter, or we can also call it humus. So humus is the topmost, most nutrient parts of the soil. Um, all right, so how does it affect, or the, how does this or presence of this organic matter uh, affect the normal crop growth? The number one here is that it improves the texture of the soil, okay? Let me just write it here improves texture of soil, right? And uh, we can also say that um, it also increase the water holding capacity of the soil, right? So what you what we mean by water holding capacity is that the ability or the ability or, or the capacity of the water, of the soil to hold the water okay uh, without it without it being leached off so it increases the water holding capacity okay i hope it is visible um, we also have that we also can say that it also uh, provides or it also acts as a food for these microorganisms as well okay and, and the last one is that these um, the uh, other thing is that the organic acids these are also released in the process of this decomposition and which can be made available for these uh, plants as well okay so that's also another uh, factor or the role of this organic matter mm. So these are some of the uh, some of the uh, role or the factors how it affect the normal. So once it uh, once once you look into these factors, once it improves the texture of the soil, and definitely uh, the aeration will be better, right? And then when the aeration is better, transportation of the water, the nutrients, whatever is going to be much more better, and it's going to help the crop production and thereby we're going to get a higher yield and second one is that once you can if you can hold the water in the soil then the availability of that water for that particular plant and no water is going to get leached off then that is also a plus point and it also acts as a food for microorganisms as we all talked about about the importance of the micro soil microorganisms so these soil microorganisms once you provide the food for these microorganisms then they are going to have a lot of activity uh, the soil microbes are going to have a lot of activity decomposition of this organic matter all of that will start and thereby later on it's also going to provide them the uh, complete 
uh, minerals and nutrients for the plants. Um, the last one was is that the also during this activity or during the whole process or breakdown of this organic matter, they also release these soil uh, inorganic compounds or chemicals which are normally not available to the plants but after the breakdown or after this decomposition process the uh, chemical compounds they are available to the plants later on okay so these are some of the factors uh, which actually help the, in the crop production um, coming to the soil organisms um, soil organisms these are the organisms or the microorganisms which are present in the soil all right uh, so these can be in terms of nematodes or protozoans or millipedes or any insects or any organisms which is present in the soil um, the first uh, impact or the fact uh, role that he plays on the crop production is that it helps in decomposition of the raw raw organic matter which is can be made available to the plants all right and the second one out here is that it helps in the atmospheric nitrogen uh, is also fixed through these micro microbes in the soil and is also made available to the crop, crop plants and this can be done through symbiotic processes okay uh, which is done through rhizobium This is an example of symbiotic association to fix the nitrogen, all right? And another one is that asymbiotic, okay? Um, guys, I'm not going to talk or explain about this in detail at this moment because uh, there is another topic where I'm going to be discussing in full detail and which will be making it clear for you. For right now, just understand that uh, these soil organisms, they help in the atmospheric nitrogen it's fixed so basically normally the atmospheric nitrogen um, is not available for the plants to be absorbed okay it's not found in a form where the plants can take it from the soil all right so what this microbes they do is that they fix this nitrogen by decomposition or through these symbiotic and asymbiotic uh, processes or type of association and thereby they make this unavailable nitrogen available for the plants to get absorbed right um so i was given an example of asymbiotic right for asymbiotic i would give as a spirulum all right so as a spirulum and rhizobium is an example for symbiotic asymbiotic we have azospirillum i'm going to be discussing this uh, later on in the other lectures as we go forward in detail all right but for now i think this is more than enough and um, coming to the soil reactions uh, when we're talking about soil reactions guys a uh, soil reaction is nothing but the ph so how we define a ph ph is the hydrogen ion concentration which is present in the soil all right so basically i think this is a very basic question so base we have if you're talking in terms of ph uh, soil has can be acidic where the range is below seven right and neutral is around seven and we have a basic which is above uh, seven all right or this is also known as the basic where we can call it as saline or alkaline and the difference i'm going to talk about it in our another chapter all right and if it's this side acidic and if it's in the middle it's neutral um so one thing that i want to tell you is that the neutral uh, is the most generic and it's the most suitable for some of the agriculture uh, crops uh, and if it's the acidic then due to the high toxicity level uh, of these aluminium and iron it becomes toxic for the growth of the plant of the plant is hampered okay 
And if it's towards the basic site, right, then what happens is that it affects the uh, transportation or, the, or it interferes with the availability of the nutrients to the plants, all right? So it interferes with the transfer of nutrients, all right? So this is how it affects, I hope this is clear, uh, base acidic, high toxicity, aluminum of and uh, iron, and so thereby it affects the growth. The most safest zone is the neutral ones, all right, and uh, saline and alkaline uh, are towards the basic site, then it interferes with the nutrient availability of the plant, all right or of nutrient available to the plant, sorry. Um, right. Coming to the biotic factors, guys. So biotic factors are the factors where the living organisms, we're talking about the living organisms, are the living organisms which can hamper the growth and development of the plant and thereby hamper the crop production. So these biotic factors uh, can be either harmful, okay guys, it can be beneficial. Right, and this can be caused by the biological organisms. So it can be a flora as well as fauna. All right, so it can be flora or fauna. I come into the plants part. So within plants, it can be either competitive or complementary in nature. Uh, an example that I would give for uh, competitive uh, would be uh, th uh, that of weed. All right, we already know what a weed is. It is an unwanted plant which grows with the main crop. All right, uh, for example, I'm going to give this. Um, so we have this plant, which is our main crop. Okay, this thing is our main crop. And here we have is a weed. All right, so what this thing is that if it's in a competitive nature, it's going to compete with the main crop for the nutrients. All right, uh, nutrient competition will be there. It's going to compete for the sunlight. All right, so since these are grown in the same area, uh, the sun rays is going to fall directly on the sweet and the main crop of ours are not going to get the direct sunlight. It's, it's also going to compete for water, right? Nutrients, we already talked about, sunlight as well as space. All right, so once it competes with the main crop for it, uh, since it's not getting enough of sunlight, it's not getting enough of water, it's, not, it's also not getting enough of nutrients, definitely it's going to hamper its growth and development. So in that way, that's how it's going to be competitive or it, it's going to be competition or going to be a harmful effect for the main crop. Um, now coming uh, to the complementary type of uh, nature of these plants here is that uh, I'm going to give an example of legumes and cereals okay so uh, legumes as we all know it has uh, it actually provide feed as well as food all right uh, another point out here is that these crops they also lower the carbon dioxide and increases the nitrous oxide emission lower the carbon dioxide and uh, nitrous oxide emission and they also contribute to carbon sequestration. And so once these legumes have this, uh, they, they have these structures, all right, in them. And these round structures, which are also known as nodules. Okay, so these uh, nodules they help in this uh, nitrogen biological fixation that we already talked about in before. So these legumes have the ability to fix the nitrogen because of this. And also that legumes also help in the soil um, fertility. It improves the soil fertility as well as gives the better structure for the plant, for the uh, soil, right? Now that we learned about this thing, uh, suppose what will happen if we actually grow uh, right beside it, if you grow a cereal crop, all right? So we are, sorry, let me just give it another. Uh, let me give it another. So we are going to grow a cereal crop out here. Um, we have 
have a cereal crop grown right beside it. All right, so this, since it also improved these, so this part will have the same soil, right guys? It, the soil is also improved. The structure of the soil is also improved. It also it has also fixed the unavailable nitrogen, so an available nitrogen, and thereby increased the nutrient, uh, nutrients of this particular soil. Definitely, it's going to be a benefit to the uh, cereals or the crops which are grown beside it. So in this way, this can be complementary. Okay, guys. The first one was competitive, and another one out here is a complementary. So if they ask you guys to give an example, an example for a competitive would be any weed. Um, example that I'm going to give is um, strict parasite weed. Okay. Of cereals, right or rice. Okay, another one out here is uh, when you legumes can be of complementary to cereals, right? So this can be an example that you guys can give. All right, um, coming to animals, right? Uh, animals or microorganisms. When we're talking about animals or microorganisms, uh, the fauna would be protozoa, all right? We have nematodes, snails, insects. They help in organic matter decomposition and they also use this organic matter for the living as a food. Uh, first thing example I would like to give here is all the nematodes. So nematodes or insects or any pests. So nematodes, these are microorganisms. Uh, these are microscopic in nature and we usually find them in the soil, all right? Um, so what does nematodes do? Some can be beneficial for the, for the plants, uh, like you can eat the parasitic nematodes, all right? Some can be parasitic, as I said. So these can cause a trouble or these can cause new diseases or it can attack the crop, all right? So in that way, it can be harmful, all right? These are harmful. Right, so it can. This uh, example for this would be a uh, root knot nematode, where it causes or it forms a knot in the root of the plant, and thereby it hampers the um, take up the nutrient take up the water take up, and thereby there will be lesion, there will be galls in the in the roots, and thereby it's going to hamper the normal growth and development. Other than that, if it's above ground. Uh, symptoms would be yellowing of the leaves and eventually the whole plant will die off. So definitely this nematode is a, um, it has a harmful effect on the crop. Um, now coming to the benefits, beneficial or, or microorganisms or benefic beneficial um, animals, right? We have here is honeybee. Honeybee actually helps in pollination, right? So it pollinates and helps in the cross pollination. Um, another example uh, out here is an earthworms. So earthworms can basically ingest or help in aeration. So they would be eating this organic matter or the dried matter around the in the soil, and they will be excreting it, which is readily available, which is an already decomposed organic matter, which is necessary for the plant, right? And this will improve the aeration of the soil, right? And also, it will also increase the um, organic matter of the soil. Um, coming to the last one out here, we have other grazing animals like cattle or sheep or goats or cows. So what they can do is that it can, they can have a, uh, they can have a harmful effect on the crop as they can just go about the farm and start feeding on the normal crops or the normal uh, plants or the main crop that you're growing. As the picture shows it, he's been eating some of the um, cabbage crops. All right, so in that way, they can be and harmful for the plant and thereby affect the crop production. All right, this is how these are some of the things on the biotic factors. Um, coming to uh, the topography or to topography or the physiography. So I would say that topography or the physi physiography relates to the natural um, structures or the landscape of that area and how is it going to 
hamper. So these tropographic factors, they won't be affecting the crop production directly, but indirectly. Okay guys, the first thing here is altitude. Uh, if you're talking about altitude, the higher altitude you would go, uh, the higher the altitude, the temperature, temperature also increases, right? And as the temperature increases, the wind velocity will also increase, right? And then it's going to hamper with the crop production um, or the growth of the plant. Uh, suppose if you go to this Latak area in our country, then you can see that the vegetation is also lesser in the colder region than in the tropical regions as you go higher the altitude. So it's the same case out here, the higher the altitude, the vegetation also goes down and thereby it can also affect the crop production, right? Uh, so definitely because we need a good temperature, we need good sunlight, so in that way it's going to affect the um, normal growth and development. Coming to the steepness of the slope, um, and the steepness of the slope, suppose uh, this is a slope and you have a plain area. Uh, in the slope area, what's, uh, what it's going to do is that there is going to be a more of water runoff and more chances of soil erosion in this. Uh, when there's soil erosion, the nutrients at the top soil is going to be eroded and thereby the nutrients are going to be washed off. And once the nutrients are going to be washed off, then the plants out here, it's, they're not going to get any of the nutrients, right? Um, so steepness of the slope is definitely going to, there will be a higher water runoff. Um, coming to the exposure of light and wind. So in the, even the exposure of, to the, towards the exposure of light and wind, we can already relate it to this one. So if it's in a steep area or or the shade or the steep area, right? So if the sun is coming from this side, then definitely it's going to help hamper with the light. As we go up, the light also, exposure to the light also will be lesser if you compare it to the plane where the uh, plants are gonna get a more direct sunlight if compared to the slope. And it's the same case with the wind, all right? And this light wind can also, a high wind in the uh, high altitude can also hamper with the or damage the crop growth and thereby can affect or hamper the crop production. All right, guys, so these are some of the factors uh, which affect the uh, which affect the crop production. And now coming to our last one, we have uh, here is a socioeconomic factors. And when we're talking about socioeconomic factors, uh, it deals with the society, all right, or the environment where the farmer or the people or the humans are involved in this, so where they're living around. The first point out here is a society inclination to farming and mem members available for uh, cultivation. As now you can see that with the development, um, even the farmers, uh, if the whole family is into farming, the new generation, they are not inclined towards farming. They want to go to the cities and um, thereby, thereby there's no one to farm at back home in, the, uh, in their agricultural land. And thereby it's going to affect the whole farming process or the cultivation, right? So this is the first one. And we also have an um, appropriate choice of crops by human beings to satisfy the food and fodder. So as you can see that India before was in more of a cereal uh, country, right? So uh, the farmers in India would only grow mostly the cereals. But uh, as the time has went by, we have moved towards the horticulture and we have uh, moved towards diversifying our products and the crop that we grow. So even the choice of crops usually till that time, people would only go for the uh, for the cereal crops, right? But which were in higher demand, which were to satisfy the needs of the people and also for the security and stability, also they would go for the crops. So even the choice of crops are affected by these uh, factors, right? Um, and the third one out here is breeding varieties by human invention for increase of yields or pests and diseases resistance. So with this new uh, technology developed, the scientific technology which is being developed, so new varieties are also being bred by now, right? So with the new varieties are coming up, there has been a resistance to the crops, the, the 
insects or the diseases or the pests and it has a better dominant character or treat and it can also affect the crop production the if it's a hybrid if it's a better characters then definitely the yield is also going to go up right and if it's just a normal variety then definitely the improved variety is going to perform better than the normal variety all right so then that's how it's going to affect the crop production um, another one out here the last one the economic condition of the farmers greatly decides the input or the resource mobili mobilizing ability right so basically in india we have a lot of marginal and small farmers only um, if you look into these farmers, these farmers they, build, they don't have a proper investment or they don't have a bigger capital, so they're not the rich farmers, right? And because of that, their uh, his choice of the input and the capital that he wants to invest in his farm on growing of these crops is also limited. Uh, if you compare it to these farmers, uh, rich farmers from the other countries where they have all the the whole farm is mechanized, you cannot go for mechanized, you cannot go for other. Um, he cannot go for uh, other inputs, extra inputs that he could put upon. So in that way, the uh, economic, the small and marginal farmers, they are definitely going to have a lesser crop production or more crop failure if you compare it to the other mechanized or large farmers. All right. So these are some of the economic uh, characters or the factors which affect the crop production. Okay. Uh, that's all for today guys. I hope you, uh, it was clear for you all and we're going to meet for another session with another topic till then uh, study hard and we'll be meeting for the next session.